Welcome to the 320 Podcast, where we encourage you to reach for the immeasurably more life with Christ. From discussions on scripture, to poetic messages, to dreaming big with Jesus, you will enjoy a variety of episodes brought to you by Shelley Wilson Ministries. To find out more about Shelley Wilson Ministries and the many resources available to you, please visit our website at www.shellywilsonministries.org. Those are, those are ways that, those are other ways that he speaks. Mm-hmm. And like you said, through the nature, through the deer, you know, he uses, na- he uses everything that he's yes, created. He does. You know, even um, when you go back into scripture, he used a donkey to talk to Baal. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yeah. Am I right? Yes. He'll do what he wants to do. Yes. Yeah. I mean, he'll do what he wants to yeah. do. He used a lot of things um, to speak to his children. So, you know, we just, if we just take the time out just to relax and um, just trust him. And he'll yeah. speak. Absolutely. And that is so true because of, in listening to all this, it, the differences of, you know. Yeah. And that it comes down to, though, as we know, not putting him in that box, of yeah. listening to him, believing in it. And yes. I, I don't understand. Well, I, I, I do kind of because of fear. Mm-hmm. And we just play it off as, oh, it's just circumstance or this just happened. Or but, coincidence, which yeah, I don't quist- believe. I don't either. In no, I believe in luck and coincidences. It's all from God. Yes. And God always gives me little gifts. That's how he <laughs> speaks to me. He gives me little gifts of glimpses of confirmation. Right. And right. people call them, I call them gifts. He gives me gifts yeah. of insights. On many times when I'm really praying for something and it's been a long time and I keep praying about it and I'm going, I know this is going to happen, you promise. And then he will give me this instant, these few words Mm. from different people and different things and let me see and he'll allow that person to say something and it is just so real that he is speaking that and he's saying see I am at work here yes your 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 prayers your faith is not unheard right and I've heard you I have heard you yes. and I'm letting and it's always within my heart I know he's, I'm, he's letting me know I've heard you I've got this do not right. worry and over and over many times he'll do that at certain times when I need those little gifts of encouragement of right. that I need to know and I go, oh I just don't he see what, what yeah what am I you know yes. what am I doing but if we don't pay attention to it right if we just say uh and disregard it and right. so many times we can do that mm-hmm. we can Satan will get in there and say oh that's really nothing that's just happened they just said those words they don't need anything and that is not true that we have to give value and recognition Mm -hmm. to what god presents to us if we're not careful you know you could have walked by and missed the red bird you know or the deer and just see it as nature and oh that's lovely instead of what god is really speaking to our hearts we have to listen and that's why it's so important that we have that relationship with him right when we have that one-on-one and we know his voice so when he speaks that to us and shows us those things that we recognize it and accept it and that's one of the things that so many people is happening to you out there but accepting it and also yeah. I'm hoping as you hear in each way the differences because our ways are so different how right. he, he communicates with us. Mm-hmm. But they're all still very precious to each one of us. We know that each one of us, it moves our heart and it, it brings joy he to our heart. So yeah, well. he does. And so you don't have to be like us. No. But he has a unique way and pay attention to your way. And right. don't think that you have, you have to, to learn what that is. Yes, you have to learn what it is, and, and also believe in it. Don't don't think you have to copy somebody else. Right. You know, and, and accept <laughs> your personal relationship because everybody has different relationships with uh, each other. Mm-hmm. You know, and we each of us have a different relationship with our God right. because of our personality right. and what we need and how we see things and and express things and receive. So we cannot ignore that and try to copy others but just pay attention mm-hmm. to what mm-hmm. he's trying to provide for us and enjoy it and receive it because once right. you do like you say it's just ooh. when he I gives know. us those gifts like he give you the red birds yes. that those answer those little words that he gives me to other person people and what they and they shut things that come along it's like oh man that is such a confirmation it's such a, a closeness it's it's oh it's just a amazing experience with him right. when you receive that that mm-hmm. oh thank you father yeah Right. And I think, you know, we often wonder why we go through our rituals. Let's say we go to church every week and 
So many people are living a life of what I call dry bones. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. And, um, Oh yeah. And listen, I've been there, so I get it. But you know, when you're not in a body of believers that knows the living, breathing, moving Jesus, Mm -hmm. you wonder what this is all about. Yeah. Yeah. And so when you do get a little taste of it, Mm -hmm. you just want more because that's Mm -hmm. what happened to me, you know, because I come from a background where we don't really talk about the Holy Spirit. The pro- the problem with that is it's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. So the Father, then the then Christ was sent to be the bridge for all of humanity mm-hmm. and to mm-hmm. pay the penalty for our sin. But then when he ascended at the right hand, he sent the Holy Spirit right. to As live within us. So mm-hmm. if we and a helper. Yeah. Absolutely. If we refuse to teach the ways of the Spirit, mm-hmm. We won't see Jesus. No. Because yes. he points to Jesus. That's right. So I'm trying to think. There was something you said while ago, and I can't remember. So I'm going to go into this other story. And Lord, bring it back to me. And before you yes. start there, I want to also say that um, when we go, I was telling, we had our Bible study this past weekend. It was in John chapter 4, and it was about the uh, the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. Right. And what people don't realize, and I was trying to, it was about an upbringing about, I was born in this denomination or I was born in this denomination and this, we didn't do this in our church and we don't do this and we didn't do this. And if we go and and read a little bit of the story about the Samaritan woman at the well, you learn that Jesus Christ comes to, um, debunk all the rules and regulations. (laughs) That's right. I I love how he decides to come in and say, well, guess what? You know, she says, if you knew who it was that you were speaking to, I I'm a Samaritan woman and you're a Jew. Basically you have no right to talk to me, you know, and she was a woman at that. They had made all these rules and regulations that men didn't talk to women. Right. Mm -hmm. And they didn't talk to Samaritans, you know, over Mm -hmm. a few that happened back in Ezra. Women were possessions. And so here Jesus comes, you know, from, uh, uh, um, is it from Jude? He's coming from Judea. He's going into Galilee and he goes through Samaria. Well, most people went around Samaria yeah. to avoid the Samaritans. Right. So he goes in into Samaria and he sits and he talks to this Samaritan woman. And I love the fact that he threw all the rules and regulations out of the window. Yeah. I love how he decided the Pharisees and the Sadducees have set up all these rules or your forefathers or whoever it was set up all these rules, but I'm here to change all that because I'm here to bring life. I'm here to change Mm -hmm. how you look at me. I'm here to, I'm here to change how you look at God. And he even tells her, you may worship on this mountain, but there's going to come a time where we're all going to have to worship God in spirit and in truth. And that's the difference. Yeah. We Mm -hmm. can't worship him the way our grandparents worshiped him or the way our mother worshiped him. There is going to come a time where we have to learn how to worship God the way he says we have to worship him. Mm -hmm. The way, the the kind of worship that brings us into a presence of a holy and sovereign God. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference. And I think that is what's keeping people from experiencing the real the, the whole, the holiness of God, the Holy spirit of God from even knowing that Jesus Christ is your best friend mm-hmm. and you can walk and talk and laugh mm-hmm. and right. dance with him and sing with him. And most people don't know that people mm-hmm. don't have that relationship. They don't know it because of rules and regulations. And I'm not, I'm not speaking ill of any church. I'm just saying that this is the problem. Again, it goes back to putting God in a box And limiting him to man's abilities, not, not, he has no, he has no limits. He's a limitless God, but we as human beings have a tendency to say, uh, no, you can't, there's no way you can hear the voice of God. And I had somebody tell me that once, there's no way you can hear, you hear the voice of God. Yes, I do. No, you really don't hear the voice of God. (laughs) Really? Don't you hear the voice of God? No, you, no, 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 that, no, that's all. Really? (laughs) <laughs> so they were, they were really adamant about the fact that I didn't hear. Mm-hmm. He spoke to Moses. Why can't I hear the voice of God? Right. What's right. the difference? Yeah. He was up on a mountain yeah. talking to God, mm-hmm. wanting to see his glory. That's and God right. said, if you see me, you'll die. Yeah. So I'm going to hide you in the cleft of the, of the mountain and the rock. And, and, and you'll catch my glory as That's I go right. by. So if Moses didn't hear that, how could he know all that? How could it have been written in the word of God? We we tend to read the scriptures in light of our own experience. Exactly. Yes. And, you know, I understand the fear of the word experience because I, listen, 
I preach righteousness and holiness. <laughs> and I, <laughs> yeah. I know there's a false fire mm-hmm. out there yes. that is deadly. Yes. yes. But you don't throw the baby out without with the bathwater. No, you don't. And God, uh, Satan always counterfeits the real yes. authentic yes, yes. move of Jesus. And, you know, I was not going to go here until you said something. Okay. So I guess the Lord's not going to not going to let me do what I want to do. Um, <laughs> well, two things. First okay. of all, I'll never the whole dancing with Jesus thing that you just said. I'll never forget when he gave me the song because he died. Um, I was in my closet praying and I just started singing it. Now, y'all both know other people don't know they're listening that I can't read or write music. Right. Mm -hmm. So the Lord taught me how to hear it. Mm -hmm. So that's how I hear his voice. So I'll, I'll begin to hear a melody in my head. Right. And it's another reason I don't listen to a whole lot of radio too, Mm -hmm. because to make sure I don't pick up anything in the natural, you know, that Mm -hmm. would copycat anything. So I don't listen to a lot of radio, but, um, I know that sounds odd for a Christian artist, but (laughs) I don't. Um, and so, uh, I realized when I began singing the song, because my eyes were closed, that I had stood up and I was doing the waltz. (laughs) Mm. (laughs) That's hilarious. Isn't it? That's great, though. Yeah. So when I called my producer with it, I said, Gary, I said, I was waltzing (laughs) with the song. So needless to say, every little thing I hear when I hear a song or a lyric He's mm. purposefully giving it, so that song turned out to be a wall, a waltz tempo. Okay. Um, so that was how I heard mm-hmm. him speak that. Um, but uh, you know, we were talking about spiritual gifts earlier, and I'm going to talk about one that probably brings a whole lot of um, controversy. Uh, controversy. And I was, I would have waited, Lord, for probably six or seven radio shows before I tackled this one. But okay, um, there was a season when. Um, I, the Lord was speaking to me about supernatural things. Um, it caused me to write a book called Rebuild the Ruins on the Baptism of the Holy Spirit. So um, needless to say, I come from a Baptist Methodist background, and um, that was nothing I had ever been taught about. Matter of fact, most times I was taught to not seek those gifts, to not, um, mm. which Paul says earnestly desire the gifts. yes. yes. Right. So mm-hmm. the first thing I was told was a lie from the devil. And the, the truth is, Paul says, earnestly seek the gifts. Yes. And so um, and God always gives good gifts, no gifts bad. Right. And there's always a purpose in every gift. Um, so anyways, I remember when the Lord had called me to give prophetic words and I rejected that because I'm a woman, because I come out of a, a, a background that says women uh, don't do that. They don't deliver messages. They can't preach. They can't pastor and all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so the Lord had to separate me from those past circles for a long season and reteach me with just me, the Holy Spirit and the word. Mm-hmm. Right. And he began to supernaturally work. So when I rejected the call to give prophetic words, um, the ne- I had told him, I said, the only way I'll do it is if you send the power I'm reading about in your scriptures. Right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Terry here and ye shall receive power. Yes. He told them. And um, I don't know if it was the day or after. Now it's been several years. I'd have to go read my own book <laughs> to figure it out. Um, I remember I had been reading about Elijah mm-hmm. and uh, how he had to call the musicians to receive the word of God. And so I, I laid down one day to, um, and there's a whole story that leads up to this that I won't go into, but I had laid down cause I was so tired the next day and I had my worship music on beside the bed mm-hmm. and I was, it was a sorrowful season, you know, it was a valley season. And as I laid mm-hmm. there to take a nap, cause I was just like, I'm so tired. I've got to lay down. I thought I was going to let out a sob. Like I was about to sob a deep. Have you ever just had such a deep yes, sob yes. come out of yes, you? Yes. Yes. Um, that you almost couldn't even hear it. Yes. It just mm-hmm. wouldn't come out. Grief, oh yeah. I'm sure you. Oh yeah. Your grief. Oh yeah. Many and, many days. Yes, and all of a sudden, my my, I was speaking a language I did not understand, and um, it went on and it went on and it went on, 
and tears just started rolling down my face. Mm-hmm. Yes. I could not move from my bed. I was pinned <laughs> from head to toe. And, yeah. you know, it says, I will baptize you with spirit and fire. Yes. Let me tell you what, I felt fire from head to my toes. Yeah. Mm. From my inner belly. And the scriptures all started coming to my mind that out of your inner will flow rivers of living water. And I remember um, as I would sit there and weep, um, and again, I'm, I'm talking to the Lord in English in my mind, but my mouth is speaking another language. So yes. my spirit was speaking to the spirit of God. I had yeah. no idea what was being said. Didn't, didn't have to know. Right. Yeah. The word, the word says it's spirit to spirit. And so this is, this is really my first encounter, mm-hmm. right? Um, with the living God possessing, coming mm-hmm. in to possess. And, um, I remember the scripture coming to my mind about Mary. Yes. Right. And how this, mm. the, it says the Holy spirit will come upon you. Yeah. And now I'm not, you know, I'm not saying I'm anything like the mother of Jesus, uh, for those who, <laughs> <laughs> not going there. Yeah. Okay. Who might, who might They'll put that all over Instagram and Facebook. Right yeah. I'm, I'm just telling an honest story of what happened to a little Baptist girl. Yeah. Your real experience with the Holy Spirit, yeah. your experience no one, with Christ. No one could take that. And from that moment on, I dove into the scriptures. Mm. And with fresh eyes, I began to read how people, how people were, they had come to hear of Jesus, but had yet mm-hmm. to receive the Holy Spirit. Right. Yeah. And I would go, what? Lord. Yes. This is what we're missing in the body of Christ. The church today is the mm-hmm. very power he sent to us to have to accomplish that which is in us. So for for the, for me that day, that was the Lord speaking to me right. by his spirit, a like prayer language that I still have to this day. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, so he does speak in tongues. Mm-hmm. Now, have I ever been called to give a message in tongues where mm-hmm. I would need an interpreter? I've not. And I believe that that is true. If I were in a congregation and he called me to that, he would provide an interpreter. Absolutely. Yes. But for me, it's between me and the Lord. Yes. Yeah, that's why Paul says, do not deny it. That's mm-hmm. right. Do not. Matter of fact, when we deny it, we come up against God himself. But there also, it says in scripture that there are various forms Absolutely. of tongue. So there's various, you know, yes. we're Absolutely. caught up in the fact that you go back to Acts chapter two on the day of Pentecost, yeah. when the Holy Spirit fell, yeah. uh, you know, and they started speaking, the men said, I, I hear them speaking to me no, in my, my own, own language. language. Right. Yeah. But if you go further and I, I, I can't remember exactly where the scripture is. Mm, I want to say it's, oh, I can't remember if it's in Corinthians where he talks about the various forms of tongues. It is, yeah. The various forms of tongues. Mm-hmm. So, you know, we we're, again, we go back to, we don't know all there is about scripture. Right. We're interpreting it the way we want it to sound. We, know, we see it dimly. We see it dimly. Right. We don't see it in the f- in the full functioning of what God had created it to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's where, that's why the churches are failing. That's why people aren't being healed. That's why people aren't being delivered. That's why people aren't because we're, we're, we're minimizing the power right. of what, of who God is. Right. We're not allowing him to be God. God. We're actually we're shutting it down. Selves, God. <laughs> yeah. We're sitting in the pews on Sunday yeah. and we're shutting it down. We're yeah. operating in the flesh. That's one of the yeah. reasons yes. that in my experience and knowing too, I had it uh power of the holy spirit came upon me in a service and uh went down and was praying in tongues mm-hmm. and then was doing that and exploring it but then was shut down because of the religion because i came of the teaching because yeah. of the teaching i came from and in fact i'm like no you cannot do that that's right. whoa and so or that's of the devil yeah which so, oh my goodness if anyone says that i pray for mercy because mm-hmm. <laughs> That is that's all very right. much like, because of the fear of it. And I, I, yeah. I understand it because I know we've talked about this many right. times that that false fire that we talk yeah. about, that we've seen that it goes to the extreme, that there is the falseness that yes. go out there, the emotionalism, the others. And that because of that fear, because of Satan skewing that, right. we went to the other extremes instead of accepting and being in the truth we seem to go to the extremes right. yes. and there and neither one is what mm-hmm. God wants. He right. wants the truth and the real experience. And so many of us are afraid of experience that and letting it happen. And so 
we not that we're saying that people aren't saved and not that they don't want the Lord and love the Lord. It's just, they're missing so much of the struggles that you see. So many of our Christians have the, the, the hardships, the frustrations, the questions of, you know, because they're operating on their own strength instead of being able to operate. Cause there is a difference when you're operating in the power of the Holy spirit, right? When you're operating and he is in charge and he's providing that it is a different ball game it really is truly right it's and you know okay just to your point i mean i was saved Mm -hmm. i was was, too i was out ministering right okay so it's not that god wasn't using me he was teaching me how to write songs and everything i will say this the poetry did not come out of me until after the baptism of the holy spirit Mm -hmm. so there will be supernatural gifts that come forward Mm -hmm. because of the Mm -hmm. endowment of power that Mm -hmm. you did not know were there yes there's an activation that happens there so uh, for me now, now everything's shifted. Right. I get mm-hmm. music different, a mm-hmm. mm-hmm. little bit, right? Yep. Um, the poetry I don't work at, like I don't know what line comes after the next line. I just start typing on my <laughs> phone, and and you know that. But it's easy. But shall we go easy. back to what you said? And this is where your listeners need to hear this. Okay. I think it was very valid, a very, a very, uh, a real reason why you said this. Okay. You said you were in a season. Mm -hmm. You had gone through loss. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. You were in a a sorrowful season. Yes. And it didn't happen until after that. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we're going to have to go through a Mm -hmm. really bad season or a sorrowful season or a lonely season or a desperate season, whatever season it is that we're in or that we're going to go through to get that which God has already ordained for us. He he has already, it says that he, he foreknew us. He, he predestined us. Mm -hmm. He called us. He justified, he sanctified. It's almost like he's got a cabinet in heaven with your name on it that says when Shelly does this, I'm going to give her this. When Shelly goes through this, I'm going to give her this. When Lynn goes through this, I'm going to give her this. When Jan goes through this, I'm going to, you know, it's a level. It's, it's, it's from level to level. It's not out all at once. And I think also that is a misconception about Christianity. It can be all at once, mm-hmm. but I believe that that's mm-hmm. God's Very choice. Yeah. It's an appointed it, it's, time. It's yes. an appointed time. Talent, yeah. He knows what we can handle. He knows what we can't handle. He knows, you know, it's all in his timing and it's all in his, mm-hmm. what he wants. It's his will and his timing. And so when you came out of that season, you came out of it gung ho, but you needed to go through that season to get what God had ordained for you or predestined oh, yeah. for you. Oh, yeah. It's okay. It's the, um, Jesus was sent into the wilderness mm-hmm. yes. and came out with power. Oh, yes. It's, it was the same thing. Yes. I was sent into the wilderness to mm-hmm. endure the chastening. Mm-hmm. The enemy was unleashed on me. Um, but because I had felt like I had nothing left, mm-hmm. I was empty. You were empty. Mm-hmm. I was empty. I was uh, empty enough to be filled. Yes. Right. Yes. right? I, I had, you know, walked away from religious teachings, had um, gotten out in a lot of ways uh, from under that. Mm-hmm. And, and it is a coming out from under it. Yes. It's an amazing thing the power religion has on us. Ooh, yes. It is a brainwashing. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, I believe in this hour God is awakening us to the truth, mm-hmm. um, which means we have to hear his voice. Yes. Right. Yes. Um, and I don't want to cut you off, Jen, because I think you were about to say something. On, I was just that each one of us, when you're talking about going through something, mm-hmm. that just as baby Christians, and he tells us this, that you were so right, Lynn, that we all have to grow. Yes. There is a, just like as children, you know, we grow, we're little kids, and we start growing as children, we turn to teenagers, and what we can handle and understand as children 
we can't as adults. I mean, there's Absolutely. because of life experiences of what we've gone through. And through those times, we have those faith building. God uses those situations mm-hmm. and the different things that we can look back and he confirms and he starts building us. And we have those faith things that we know him better and we learn these things and we experience these things till we get to every time, like you say, you were saying every level that we get to. Yes. And that's so true that we get to this level and then God says, okay, let's grow a little bit more. Here we show and a little bit more. And that uh, that is I see it over and over. That is the way that we have to grow. It's it's what he meant by going glory to glory, glory. strength to strength. Yes, yes, yes. It yes. really is. And being willing to do that and understand it and not become discouraged. Because sometimes Satan gets in there and we can be discouraged by mm-hmm. it. Because, of, well, why is this struggle? Why am I not doing this? Where am I here? Because, you know, he said he's going to have, we were talking about this the other day. It was a missionary, and I wish I could remember what story it was, that he knew that he was called to the mission field. And that... He knew that God had called him, but he said, okay, God, I'm ready to go. And he kept waiting to go. You know, I'm going to be sent out here. And it never came. So he went to, he said, no, go to college. No, go to do this. Go do this service. And he said, why am I doing all this? You called me and told me I'm supposed to be over here. And then finally, like six years later, he was sent to there. And God revealed to him that, you know, I was preparing you to go. You weren't right. ready then. And everything that you've gone through is enabling you to go and be effective here. Right. You didn't have what you needed to be over here. I right. used you along the way and used your experience and growth in every situation that you were to you got here. Right. And then we have to wait upon that and understand. And that's one of the things I know for me personally, whew, I'm impatient. <laughs> <laughs> when God says, okay, let's go. Here we go. Let's go. And yeah. uh, learning to wait upon the Lord. Yeah, I'm, I'm and, with you. And understand that we have to, go through these seasons, go through these growth things and get to that. And unfortunately, sometimes I know personally, I have, he's had to get me into a valley, get me into that desperate where I was ready to receive (laughs) because till I got there, Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready to receive it. I kept trying to do it myself. I kept having my idea of what it was supposed to be. And God's had to take all that away to get me to where I was into that openness, to I was right. into that emptiness, mm-hmm. to that I was down on my face crying to him and going, I can't do this. Mm-hmm. Yes. And so, you know, be patient, wait upon the Lord, and don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged. That's the one thing all of us, we're all different ages here. We're all different walks. But trusting in the Lord and that is it. Don't be religious and don't be in that you have to hear and you're going to do this. Right. <laughs> you know, Wait upon the Lord, because he's yeah. going to show and reveal to you what it is you need at that time. Mm-hmm. If we just trust him, and that's it, and obedience. Yes. That trust and obedience is where we get it. Mm-hmm. You know, and so many of us lack that and that faith of that. No matter what the circumstances, mm-hmm. you know, as Paul says, no matter what my circumstances is, it's not about, do. yes, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, Lord, yeah, I've learned. I'm on that one still. No matter what. <laughs> I think we all yeah. are. And, well, and especially we here in the church in America. Yeah. That we don't get that circumstance. We think happiness, mm-hmm. and it's not. Yeah. It's joy and that obedience, right. no matter what it is, that we'll follow Christ and have that joy. You know, it's Which not. It's actually not ours, but His. That's right. So the joy of the Lord is my strength. I used to read that different. Mm-hmm. But see, I can be serving in the pit. Yes. Somewhere and yes. have joy because he's happy. Mm-hmm. He, he swells in us, right? So he yeah. Lives, yeah. he indwells in us. So I'm going to, as his vessel, we will feel his joy mm-hmm. and we will feel his grief. We hope today's episode has blessed you and encouraged you to pursue Christ passionately. To join us again for more encouragement, equipping, and empowering, subscribe to the 320 Podcast. We would also like to invite you to enjoy our round-the-clock radio station, Royalty For Real Radio for Women, at royaltyforreal.com. That's royalty, the number four, real.com.